Okay, so now we've looked at the inertia, uh, the inertia term, the acceleration term, the mass times acceleration, the inertia term. Now it's time to look at the forces, the forces per unit volume. So let's start with the easiest one, a body force. If there's a mass in this volume, there will of course be a body force, which is just the mass per unit volume times the acceleration due to gravity. That will give us the weight of the fluid in that volume. And if we want it in, in units of force, then we got to multiply it by the volume because we use the density. Or we can divide that volume away and we'll get that per unit volume. Okay, next I want to talk about surface forces, the other types of forces we can have on a control volume. Those are the forces that are acting on the surfaces of my control volume. And the simplest one to think about uh, before we derive it in general is the pressure. And so pressure is always a compressive force. So if I look at the pressure forces in the x direction, I will have a pressure acting in this direction on this face and a pressure acting in this direction on this face. It's always acting in compression. And I can use my Taylor series expansion to derive that pressure based on the value at the center here. On my x minus face, it'll be p minus the rate of change of p times the distance I've moved. And to make it a force, we have to multiply by the area of the face dy dz. Likewise, the pressure on this face will be equal to p plus dp dx dx over 2 times the area. And so the difference between these, the net force applied on my control volume, is the difference between this force, which is positive, and this force, which is negative, and that's going to be minus dp dx times the volume. Or when I divide by the volume to get my force per unit volume, the difference, the net force in the x direction due to the pressure force divided by the volume is simply going to be minus dp dx. And we'll see the same thing happen over and over when we look at a control volume. Because we're expanding the variables from the center to this side, and we're looking at a rate of change and the distance that we move to this face, and a rate of change and the distance that we move to this face, it will only ever be those differences, and we'll just get the derivative or the gradient of the quantity that we're interested in. So now we've got to work through surface forces. Surface forces, in general, are a little harder to think about, so let's take this a little bit more slowly. First I want to remind you about the surface normals. So here's my control volume in three dimensions, and we define an outward facing normal vector. So on my x plus face, there's my normal vector. On my x minus face, there's my normal vector. And on my y plus face, there's my normal vector. All of them are shown in this figure. When we talk about stresses on these surfaces, of course, if we want a force, just like the pressure, we need to multiply the stress by the area over which it's acting to get a force. And we need to define the positive direction for those forces. So we're going to define the stresses as two subscripts, where the first one represents the face on which they're acting. So if I, want, if I have a force on this surface, its first subscript will be an x. And the second subscript will be the direction in which the force is acting. So let's look at the forces in the x direction. I could have an, sorry, the stresses in the x direction. I could have a normal stress acting in the x direction on this x face. And likewise, I could have a shear stress acting on a y face, first subscript being the face in which it's acting, the second subscript being the direction in which it's acting. So I could have an x direction shear force acting on a y face. And finally, I can have on a z face, this is the z plus face, I can have a shear stress acting in the x direction as well. Now these, as shown, are defined as positive stresses because they're in the positive coordinate direction and they're on faces which have normal outward normals in the positive direction. So likewise, the stresses on the face, the back faces, like this one back here, would be another tau zx but it's on a face which has a negative, a normal, an outward normal in the negative direction, and therefore its positive direction is shown, is in the negative coordinate direction to match the negative coordinate direction of the normal vector on that face. So that can be a little bit confusing, perhaps it takes a little bit of thought, but notice that there's going to be three terms, a normal stress acting on the x face, and a shear stress acting on the y and z faces, um, for each of these. So if I look at the forces in the z direction, which of course we're now deriving the x direction, but I want this to be clear, then we would have a normal stress on the y face, 
and a shear stress on the z face acting in the y direction and a shear stress on the x face acting in the y direction and again the positive directions for all of these are shown on each of the faces and the same thing for the z direction i can have a shear stress a normal stress on the z faces and shear stresses on the x face and shear stresses on the y faces and again the positive directions shown now just like the pressure when i look at the differences between this say let's take the normal stress for example there's a normal stress on this face in this direction a normal stress on this face in this direction what i care about is the difference between these two to get the net force on the control volume and just like the example with pressure that's going to mean that what we get is the gradient or the derivative of this quantity in the z direction so i can write all of those for each of my coordinate directions so this is the x component equation the one that we're really deriving i put the others there in case you want to look at them but let's focus on this one because that's the equation that we're deriving this term the inertia force we've already looked at i've added the body force that we put in here and now we're looking at the surface force so i had those three components but i need the difference between those two faces and so that will be the gradient in the x direction of that normal stress sigma xx the gradient in the y direction of the stresses on the y faces in the x direction and the gradient in the z direction the derivative in the respect to z of the shears on the z face in the x direction and now in order to move forward i need to express these normal stresses and shear stresses in terms of variables that we already have u v and w in order to solve that and how we're going to do that is we're going to express those stresses in terms of the shear rates you might remember from the introductory chapter that we talked about a newtonian fluid and newtonian fluid is one where the stress in the fluid is linearly proportional to the strain rate we're not going to go into detail in deriving that relation but many 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 fluids in fact most fluids of interest are newtonian fluids and that's what we substitute in to get our navier stokes equations which enables us to solve a tremendous amount of practical fluid problems.